ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله تعالى وان خير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وان كل بدعه ضلاله وإن كل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله منها وإياكم Brothers and sisters in Islam Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Who gave us the opportunity And chose us among those who get the time And the will to attend a Friday prayer This prayer that at some time, a couple years ago, became very difficult. None of us had thought that we will be prevented from praying together, but it did happen. And as we are learning how to live with the pandemic, and as we learn how life continues, we go back to the Qur'an, to the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared as statements that will be in this life for eternity and even beyond. As you all know, people who get into paradise will get degrees. And those who read the Qur'an will be told, Iqra, warattil, wartaqi, read from the Qur'an, read with tartil, and get higher in paradise as much as you can read. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He grants all of us that opportunity to read the Qur'an in this life and in paradise and get to higher degrees, Allahumma ameen. And we read and memorize and look for explanation of the meaning of the Qur'an to improve our lives. And I say lives with the nest, not us as a group, but as individuals, because we have many. On a daily basis when we go to sleep, the dua of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we put our head to the pill, on the pillow, Part of the dua, وَالَّتِي لَمْ تَتَوَفَّهَا فِي مَنَامِهَا Oh Allah, I surrender my soul to you. Translation of the meaning of part of the dua. If you took my soul during my night time, and scholars called it the small death, we ask Allah to be merciful with it. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrected it and we woke up, we ask Allah to protect it. And then ultimately, the life without an end in paradise for those who are lucky to get in there and well I billah eternity in hellfire for those who did not spend the time in this life to work for the hereafter in surah al-kahf the cave there is a verse that i would like to stop at today and it says 
قل هل ينبئكم بالاخسرين اعمالا Do you need me to remind you or to inform you about those on the worst list of losers? الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنع Those whose work in this life is wasted while they thought they were doing good. Aside from many explanations of the meaning, one of those important points is that this verse is a call to everyone to review their work. What if I am amongst those who think they are doing good, but my work will be wasted? What if my intention that I started with early in the morning got interfered with? by myself or shaitan. I could be coming to the masjid to do something good, to pray, or to donate, or to put time, or to clean. Something that nowadays we don't see much. We're living in luxury where we pay custodians to take care of the masjid. A duty that people used to rush to do. To put it on their resume with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In my lifetime I came across people that we did not know what they used to do until they passed away. And then we found that some part of the masjid were not clean anymore. In any way. Sometime a person could be coming to the masjid to do something good. And because of a parking spot argument, he may lose the reward for being in the masjid. Sometimes because people want to catch the reward of their prayer, they may commit so many infractions on the way to the masjid. The Messenger وسلم, for example told us when you come to the masjid, come with respect, even if you're going to miss the prayer. If you did not plan your time properly to go through traffic lights and maybe push some people right and left and park on the wrong side because you want to catch the prayer. That's a person that needs to ask himself, what am I doing? Do I repeat this on a weekly basis? Do I plan my time accordingly so that prayer in my life is a pillar, a priority? So this verse is a call to many people to review their work. They think that they are doing good. So in order not to be among that category, in the same way, you look at your finances as an individual or as an organization. We need to hold ourselves accountable and look at our actions, how we spend our time, how we spend our efforts. What is our tongue being used with during the day? It's nice to sit after the prayer and say Astaghfirullah 33 times or a hundred times. But did we ask ourselves throughout the day how many times my tongue was busy remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Along the same line, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an while talking about our senses, specifically our hearing, eyesight, and the function of the heart, directed our attention to the fact that blindness does not happen only to the eyes. 
Listen to this verse. After A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about or requesting the Messenger وسلم, to remind the people of Quraysh, didn't they look or hear or understand what happened to other people before them or during that time? And again, this is a verse out of a large narration and sequence of verses. The verse says, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا Didn't they travel throughout earth and had hearts with which they make sense? And we'll come back to that issue of heart and common sense. أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Or ears with which they hear. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ Indeed, it's not the eyes that get to be blind. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ It is the blindness of the heart that takes over. When it came to your ears, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you're going to hear with it. As a matter of fact, the physiology of our body, you could go to sleep, at least part of it, your ears are running, working, recording. Simple example, if you're sleeping and somebody shouted for you, you're going to wake up, did you call me? But you're not going to see. If your eyes are closed, you're not going to see. But when you're awake and your eyes are open, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, it's not the eye that will be blind. It's what the heart is processing. And he used the word ya'qilun for the heart. They make sense through their heart with what they see. Along that line, it was a dua ma'thur from some of the salaf. Followers of the followers of the companions, they used to say, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna attiba'a. Oh Allah, make us see what's right as right. And give us the rizq of following it. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna attiba'a. Some people do see what's right in front of them, but they don't see it as right. A few years ago, an accident between two cars happened in front of the school in Boca. Two witnesses had two different narrations. The police asked for the security camera. It was a totally different story. What's even more funny, two police officers looking at the same tape came up with different conclusions for the accident. So sometimes you could look at things, but you don't see it the way it is. And some people get to see what is in front of them as real, but they don't get that risk, that bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to follow that. They know that's wrong. They may tell you, I know brother, this is wrong and I know I'm doing it. I cannot do anything about it. So brothers and sisters, as we navigate in this pandemic, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran always referred to those pandemics as stories that happened on, not only to people. But he held people who came after responsible for not making sense out of it. How did it change the world? What's in it for me? How did I change in response? How did I change my action? Did I increase my prayers? Did I increase my donation? Did I put my time properly in where it should be? These are questions that we should have answer for. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness, ask him forgiveness, inna huwa al ghafurur rahim Inna Allah wa malaykata yusalluna ala al-nabiyya yuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Before we do the dua in English I would say another dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward all those who made the reality of this new building for Nur Islam Academy a reality with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala last Wednesday was the first uh, well we opened uh, a week ago last Wednesday was the first day for the county we opened the week before but as the county opened, some people may have discovered that they want to join. We still have some spaces. And we welcome everyone to join if we still have a place. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how much rewards are going to those who worked hard, put time, effort to make that a reality. And another good news, alhamdulillah, as you know, with the start of the pandemic, we started to have two khutbah in this masjid. This one and the other one, about an hour from now. Going forward, the second khutbah also will be open to the community and will be the khutbah for the students of the school. So we don't, don't deprive them from that opportunity to attend the khutbah on a regular basis every week. That being said, we humbly request you as we finish the prayer, as you depart and leave the parking in order, to make room to parents and others who are coming for the second khutbah. And you're more than welcome to come and join us in the second khutbah too, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you and your family safe, inshallah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت لا ملجأ ولا منجا منك إلا إليك اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا واجعلنا هادين مهديين يا ارحم الراحمين ولا تجعلنا ضالين ولا مضلين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وقوموا الى صلاتكم يغفر لكم ذنوبكم الامين الذي خلق السماوات والارضين والصلاه والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيد الانبياء ومرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد فقد قال تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى أيضا في القرآن المجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهُ رَسُولُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْضًا عَظِيمًا أما بعد We give thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for affording us this opportunity to be in this sacred noble masjid to glorify his name and we send the road and salam upon our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In our khutbah today I would like to begin with a short story to illustrate a certain point there was a young man and he was told that he has to perform five daily prayers however as young teen he was looking at a way in which he can get away from it he was pretty lazy smart but lazy he think that praying five times a day were troublesome so one day, he came up with a great idea. He came up with this idea that I will see which one of the days is the best day that I can pray, and I'll pray the best on that day, and the remaining days I wouldn't need to pray. So he went to his grandpa. He said, oh grandpa, 
which is the best day I can pray? And his grandpa told him, the day before you die, the day before you're about to pass away, that may be the best day for you to pray. And he was a little bit astonished. He was taken aback. And he said, but I don't know when I'm going to die, oh grandpa. I don't know the day. And then the grandpa told him, that is why you need to pray five times daily, Sola, every single day. Students, teachers, Sola is the second most important pillar in our religion. A pillar sometimes is referred to as a foundation. We know that for any building to be strong, it must have a very solid foundation. Without a solid foundation, that building is subject to collapse. And the Rasul has said to us that this dynamic religion of ours is built upon five pillars of Islam, five foundations. He says, Bunya al-Islam wa la khams, shahada, and la ilaha illallah wa akhimu salah. Of course, shahada and la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. That Islam has been built upon five pillars. First is the declaration that I believe in Allah and his messenger is the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. The second is to establish prayer. The third, you guys know it, to perform uh, the fast in Ramadan and Zakah and Hajj. When we examine uh, those pillars of Islam, we realize that those pillars has to be formed once in a certain time, in a certain time frame, within a certain period. For example, zakah is best to be done if one is qualified to pay it during the month of Ramadan. For example, hajj should be performed once in a lifetime. And when it comes to fasting, the month of Ramadan. But how is salah different from all these pillars of Islam? You see, salah is the most regular compulsory action in our lives. Prayer or salah is that one act that must be fulfilled five times a day. Irregardless of the circumstances and situations we may be. Do you know that even when Muslims are in a battle, they have to pray? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in the Holy Quran, Hafidhu ala salawat. Guard strictly your prayer. For in the and in the next ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 238 or 239, Allah says, Even if you fear an enemy, then pray on foot or while riding. So if in a battle we have to pray, much less peacetime. You see, as Muslims, Salah is such a requirement that we are unable to get out of it. We have to pray it whether we like it or not. If we are unable to stand, then we have to sit and pray. And if we are unable to sit, then we have to lie down and pray. And even while we have to lie down and we may not be able to move our limbs, some of the scholars have told us that we have to use our eyes to make sujood and to make ruku. There is no way that we can get away from our prayers. There is no substitution that we can use to say we don't need to pray salah. That's the one command. That is the one pillar that we have to observe five times a day every single day of our lives. There is no substitution and there is no getting away from it. There is no like the young man was trying to do. Students, our salah is a media of success. Our salah is a way 
whereby we can enter and have a successful life in this world, but it is one of those ways where on the day of judgment we'll become successful. If we do not or deliberately miss our prayers, then on the day of judgment in front of people, we will look like losers and we will become unfortunate people. We don't want to fall into that category of people. We want to be winners. And Salah is a media. Salah is a way in which we are winners in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Successful both in this life as well as in the, first, in the next life. You see, the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to question us on the day of judgment when we stand in front of Him is not how great a degree we achieved. It's not even if we were good to our parents and our community. It's not if we were great leaders and great people who were service-oriented. These are all great qualities and attributes to have. But that's not the first thing that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to account or ask us to account to him about. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna awwala ma yuhasabu bihi al-abda yawm al-qiyama min amalihi salatih. That the first thing or the first deed that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will um, call into question us about on the day of judgment will be the performance of our prayer. And he went on to mention, he said, And if that salah that we prayed had become perfect, or is perfect. That is, we were punctual and regular in performing the five daily prayers. And we didn't miss our prayers deliberately. We didn't miss our prayers because we thought that watching that extra minute of TV uh, would have bring some success to us. But we were punctual in, the, uh, in performing the, our prayer on time. Then it says that he would be safe and successful. What kind of person will be safe and successful on the day of judgment? Those who were punctual, regular, consistent in observing their five times daily salah. But then, on the other hand, if we were neglectful of our prayers, on the other hand, if we were not conscious of the time of the prayers if we allow shaitan to influence us or influence us to such an extent that we were madly doing something else rather than observing this command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said to us he said وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَ وَخَسِرَ But if our prayer, if our prayers were defective, he will be unfortunate and be called a loser. None of us wish for that to happen. So insha'Allah, we would make this oath and we should have this determination that I want to be successful so I am willing to perform my prayer five times a day. As human beings, we are created weak. Not physically weak, spiritually weak. Allah mentions, وَقُولِ قَالْ إِنسَانُ ضعيفه. Mankind is weak. Weak spiritually. Without seeking Allah's help, it would be impossible for us to be good people. 
bad deeds, bad actions, being unjust, cheating, using inappropriate language, foul language, are all considered to be bad actions. And they're despicable actions. But how I, as a human being, will be able to rid myself of these very obnoxious actions and deeds and words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to help us. And He give us this beautiful gift of as salah Mentions in the Holy Quran, He says, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. Indeed, our five daily prayers refrain us from shameful acts and unjust deeds. How is it possible that we will be stand in front of Allah for five times a day and still cheat in our exams, still cheat in our businesses? How is it possible that we can stand in front of Allah and when we become annoyed or our next student annoy us, we let out all sorts of strange vocabs on them. If our salah is read and performed with concentration, with devotion, with full attention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at us, then these are methods and ways this salah to prevent us from falling into these traps of shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise mentions to us the purpose of praying, the significance of praying. He put prayer in order for us to be in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray so that we can be grateful and express thanks and appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remind Him of His greatness. We pray to say, Thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from preventing me from doing bad things. You see, just as our body requires food and it requires drink in order to be strengthened, we have a spiritual soul within us. And that spiritual soul is nourished by ibadah, worship. And in order for us to enhance and to increase and to nourish that soul, the most important ibadah that we can do, the best fertilizer that we can put into that soul is a salah, five times daily prayer. It makes no sense if we have a healthy body, but we are weak spiritually. Makes no sense if our spiritual soul is not nourished. Take for example, we as human beings, our body should be something that is holistic, should be wholesome. We should exude positive vibrations, creativity and energy. But our physical body alone wouldn't give us that. We need that spiritual soul in order to let us represent a positive mindset. In order for us to represent a mindset that is unconquerable, that is full of confidence and creativity. So it is Soleh that nourishes that internal soul that will give us that strength and energy that motivation, that positive attitude that we are looking for. How do we know that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanus 
tajibu lillah wa rasul all you who believe respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger idha da'akum lima yuhyikum when he calls you to that which is alive to that which gives you life when he calls you to that which gives you life what gives us life what is we be, what is it that we've been called to our prayer our salah five times a day that gives us that energy to go on and to conquer things that sometimes seems impossible so inshallah let us use the salah to be a form of success a form of eternal felicity in the life hereafter and we all should be called winners by performing our salah wa akhira wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد عما ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسول اما بعد ان الله ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم واقيم الصلاه قال يا